In the last chapter, Marley and Marley's father got threatening phone calls. Um, and in the chapter before that, Marley was helping Liz learn how to be quiet. And we learned that Marley and Liz met up at the Rock Crusher. So this is chapter 29, Good Enough. As soon as I saw Liz the next Tuesday, all my words about my sister came tumbling out. Wow, said Liz when I was finished. All I had to report was that we ate a lot of pumpkin pie. We were folding a bunch of whack flyers on the big stone. The flyers were asking people to come out and vote in the December 6th election. Remember guys, that's for the new school board. Miss Winthrop had dropped them off the night before. I just don't understand how you get so much done, she marveled. I didn't tell her Liz was helping me too. Each time the wind picked up, it blew a few of the flyers across the meadow, and either Liz or I had to run after them. As we folded and stamped all the flyers, I kept talking, telling Liz all about the Christmas float our church was doing. Every year, the Saturday before Christmas, all of the churches in town, well, all of the white churches, built a float and sent it down Main Street. The mayor voted on the winner, and the church got bragging rights for a whole year. Usually, everyone wanted to, everyone wanted to ride on the float, and only one or two people were picked. But this year, we had a theme from Matthew 19:14: Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Reverend Mitchell was going to be Jesus, sitting on a throne, and the kids from Sunday school were going to be the children. Everyone who wanted any, everyone who wanted to could ride on the float, and I was super excited. <laughs> You'll come, right? I asked Liz. Marley, I can't. Why not? Someone might recognize me. Can't you wear a disguise? And Liz shook her head. I knew she was right, but it didn't make it any easier. For the hundredth time, I wish we could do all the normal things friends do. Go places for fun, have the same circle of friends, eat lunch together at school. How's school going? I asked. I'd been talking so much, I was embarrassed to realize I hadn't even asked about her. Liz grinned. It worked! I got a notebook over Thanksgiving break. I've already written five pages, and that was just yesterday. Today, she really asked me why I was scribbling away, but I just wrote my answer down, making sure she couldn't see it, of course. And after a minute of my not responding, she left to talk to Janet. Maybe they started gossiping about me, and maybe they didn't. But I was so busy writing about them, I didn't hear a word. That's great, I said. Tommy will be in the parade, Liz said. I'll tell him to wave to you. I know it's not the same as being there myself, but don't worry about it, I said. It's good enough. After Tuesday afternoons with Liz, I started spending Friday afternoons with Betty Jean. It started when she baked me an extra special triple layer chocolate cake to say thank you for helping with Curtis. Then I did the ironing for her one week to say thank you for the cake. And she baked me a strawberry rhubarb pie to say thank you for me ironing. After that, after that, I said, why don't we just help each other out each Friday? And she thought that was a great idea. Betty Jean taught me a lot, starting with the NAACP. That stands for the National Association for the Advancement, Advancement of Colored People. They filed lawsuits and stuff to help uh, colored people get more rights. They'd even been a part of the Brown vs. Board of Education lawsuit that had started this whole integration issue. I told her about the WEC and what we were doing with the election and how there weren't any colored people in the group. Betty Jean nodded. Heard about that from Miss Daisy Bates. Miss Bates was what Betty Jean called an activist. Her husband owned a newspaper, and she spent a lot of time helping the Little Rock Nine last year. I can't say we're thrilled about the no colored people policy, but Miss Bates says Miss Terry is a good woman. What I learned most from talking to Betty Jean was that things were complicated. Take starting a private school for the colored people, for example. The whites had done it with T.J. Ranney. At first, it sounded like a good idea to me, but Jetty. Betty Jean said the NAACP had asked the colored community in Little Rock not to do so. Why not? It would be doing what the segregationists wanted, setting up separate schools. Not to mention that it would be betraying the nine students at Central who suffered through last year. What happened to them? I asked. I mean, I know Ernest 
Green graduated and Minnie Jean Brown was expelled, but what about the rest of them? Minnie Jean is still in New York, said Betty Jean, at the school she was invited to attend when she was expelled from Central last year. Carlotta, Melba, Thelma, Elizabeth, and Jefferson are taking correspondence courses. Terrence moved to Los Angeles to live with relatives and go to school there, and Gloria went to Kansas City to do the same. You keep working with the WEC, Marley, Betty Jean said. We want to move forward so that Curtis and your friend Liz will have the same opportunities that you do without having to leave town. Yeah, I thought. That sounded pretty good to me.